All right, we're dealing with a, a question that um, we were asked. Uh, define Daniel chapter 7, verse 13. Now, we go back to the book of Daniel. We understand him being an Old Testament prophet who has um, been carried away into captivity. He is being uh, in the king's household there for being provided for. In this, you have a dream that is going to be uh, interpreted. Uh, but Daniel chapter 7, verse 13, it says, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Let's keep going into verse 14, though, because I think it's needed. Um, and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. And so, you know, the simple answer here is that this is a messianic prophecy, promise, uh, talking about the Son of Man, Jesus, coming, and that he will be establishing a kingdom that will last forever um, is the simple uh, way of trying to go about that. Jeff? Right, and it's talking about how he came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days. It That refers to his ascension to heaven where he received the kingdom. Because we know in Acts chapter 2, he had already received it. Because the same Jesus whom you crucified, God had made both Lord and Christ, as what Peter said in his lesson. Uh, so, and, the, and what it mentions concerning that, uh, there was given him dominion. And, of course, before he ascended, he said, all power is given to me in heaven and earth. And, uh, and of course, the glory and kingdom and all people, nations, and all. And you go to Isaiah chapter 2, and it mentions the same thing in regard to prophetic statements about the church. Exactly. Right. Yeah. 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 And also, as we always say many times, whenever we receive a question, and one of the first things you should always do is look at the context. Mm -hmm. And the context of Daniel chapter 7, if you just back up and start reading, <laughs> what you see here is these beasts that come up. And what he's doing is he's describing these kingdoms that are going to be coming. Uh, if you back up to Daniel chapter 2, you see... Am I saying that right? I got his. Yeah. Daniel chapter two. Yes. In the days of these Kings, verse 44, mm -hmm. this is kind of a parallel passage to that. And so what he's saying is essentially Nebuchadnezzar, King of Babylon, you know, there's your kingdom, but then after you is going to come another kingdom and then there's going to come another kingdom and another kingdom. And in that fourth kingdom, that's whenever the son of man here, the ancient of days is going to come and set up his kingdom. And it's messianic because it's not a physical kingdom. It's a spiritual kingdom. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and so I um, hope that defines it. It's uh, Daniel is a great book of prophecy concerning the coming of Christ. And, and I remind people, you know, there's over 300 messianic prophecies in that Old Testament that, that it's just amazing. You know, it, and sometimes it's, you know, uh, Ray sometime back had asked me about where's the list of those 300, you know, and I've got some books that deal with all this and, but I'll be reading a passage and uh, here recently in the book of Ezekiel. And, and I'm like, oh, there's another one. <laughs> yeah. and, and and the more I read and study the Old Testament and I have a greater understanding of the New Testament while I do that, it, it just kind of jumps out of the page. At yes. you. And so what I encourage people to do is read, read, and read. If you want to be able to understand it, read it more. You start seeing it fit together and, and it's really beautiful. Yeah, and you'll notice every time we always say context because you can get that. You know, that question about 300 prophecies, Ray, one, right. of the, one of the problems with that is it's difficult to define those prophecies because they, they come in dip. Sometimes they're not as cut and dry, are they, Guyton? They're not. Uh, Don uh, clarifies on his question, who is the one like Son of Man? Oh, okay. And that's uh, Jesus uh, would be the simple answer to that. Do you all have some way to that you'd like to expound upon that a little bit more uh, of what he's speaking of here? Jeff or Troy? Well, well, when you, well, it was a vision, and it would indicate that, uh, you know, if it's prophetic of something that's going to happen, then it's a comparison to the Son of Man. And earlier, when they, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, wasn't there someone like the Son of Man in the furnace protecting Shadrach, Meshach, in a bed go. That's a great point. Let me go and, back and take a quick and look. The same language is used in that regard. Yeah, I was it, it, I was trying to find that because you have a lot of passages that will reference Jesus uh, that will say like the Son of Man. All right. So in uh, 
what you were just quoting there in the fiery furnace, it actually says a fourth is like the son of God. Son of God. Okay. However, Ezekiel uses that phrase son of man, which is applied to him sometimes, but mm -hmm. typically it is Christ because it's just, it's an aspect of his being deity and humanity. Right. And you mentioned it. Listen, right there, it says watching in the night visions. This is a vision. Right. Behold, one like the son of man coming with the clouds of heaven came to the ancient of days. And, you know, the, who else did that? And not, not a normal man. And so, and then when you go on to continue reading in the context about this kingdom, uh, the, basically what you do is you deduce mm -hmm. that this has to be, this has to be the Messiah. This has to be the promised. Right. Uh, and, and he is again called the son of man. He himself called himself the son of man. Right. Exactly. And then a reference to the kingdom that he talked about in chapter two. Yeah. Uh, that, that would come be during the days of the Roman King. I hope that's satisfactory. I don't. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I think that, I think that does it. Uh, Jeff, uh, you kind of mentioned on this a minute, just define the ancient of days one more time for us. Uh, uh, and then I'm going to move on to, um, well, I would say that it's probably a reference to, uh, God, or deity, uh, or heaven itself. Uh, the fact that he came, uh, came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him. And there he was given the dominion and glory and the kingdom and talking about his ascension to heaven, where he was given that and acts two talks about that to some degree. Uh, and, and of course the, the fact that we, as we referred to all ago, that, uh, that God had made the same Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. This was only 10 days after his ascension when that statement was made. Right. So this is something that occurred. And, and of course the whole preaching had to do with the, the kingdom being established, the earth and manifestation being the church and the coming right. of the clouds of heaven and defining that. Cause that was a follow up on this question oh, okay. is really dealing with the concept that it's not from earth. Yes. Right. And there's a, there's a good commentary on this revelation chapter four and five. Yes, because that's that's basically what you're seeing right here is coming on the clouds. He came to the ancient of days, and that's the whole picture that you see in Revelation four and five is the one who was the lion of the tribe of Judah, a, a lamb that was slain. He was able to come to the throne and take that scroll. I, I think that's a parallel passage. It, exactly. Jeff. And uh, Acts one nine, it said, and when he had spoken these things, uh, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And not only that, uh, it says that, uh, uh, so shall that he will come in the manners you have seen him go into heaven, but a cloud took him, took him out of the sight, out of their sight, um, which would be a reference to the, uh, ascension. 